welcome back to another Tutorial Tuesday. Today you're gonna learn my favorite gimmickless card to wallet with a signed card and no palming. Now this does require a little bit of sleight of hand, but it's not difficult. You can make it as easy or as difficult as you want to, but ultimately you can take a regular wallet and by the end of this video, you will be performing a signed card to wallet without any Palming. So I released this a couple of years ago, maybe like eight years ago, on my Odyssey DVDs. These are double disc DVD set called Odyssey. And ever since then, if I'm ever in a situation where I need to perform a signed card to wallet and I don't have a special magician's wallet on me, this is my go-to all the time. And I'm excited to share it because I, I put it on Odyssey and I haven't put it online at all ever since. So I'm gonna share with you all my latest handlings, my latest tips and tricks, and I'm gonna show you exactly how it looks by performing it directly to the camera with you guys burning my hands from start to finish. So get ready, grab yourself a deck of cards, grab yourself a Sharpie, grab yourself a wallet, and you're gonna be able to learn how to do a signed card to wallet anytime, anywhere by the end of this video. Just before we dive into it, let me tell you some really exciting news. Uh, for all of you that follow me and listen to mine and Craig Petty's podcast called The Magic Podcast, it's pretty close to the bone, it's a little bit X-rated, but it's a no holds barred take on current events and what's happening in the magic industry. Uh, something pretty amazing happened over the last few days. One of the people on our Facebook group, the Magic Podcast official discussion group called Rich Relish, who's a Welsh magician, suggested we should do something. And it was a, a, an idea which Craig seen and I seen, we were both like, that would be amazing. And then it was like, really, how are we gonna make that happen? And then we got a call from somebody who organizes a certain thing that confirmed it within hours and said, we're doing it. And that special thing is, we're doing a, a live episode of the Magic Podcast as, the, as an official part of the Blackpool Magic Convention lineup. I can barely get the words out, I'm so excited. So we're gonna be on stage at Gillow's Bar straight after the gala on Friday night, so that when the opening nights, me and Craig on stage doing a live episode of the podcast. Come along and watch it if you're at Blackpool. Give me questions, answers, awards, and we're gonna do some crazy stuff. And you know if you listen to it that it's a no hold barred podcast. We have to make some edits sometimes, like for legal reasons. We can't do that live, so it's gonna be wild and you're gonna have so much fun. And to be involved in any capacity in Blackpool is a huge honor, but, but to do it with Craig, to do it in the way that I've always wanted to do it. If I was ever gonna do Blackpool, I wouldn't wanna do it like, like other people do. To do something like this is so special. So massive thanks to Blackpool Match Convention and Russ Stevens for making it happen because he called us within hours of seeing Rich Relish's post Thank the Lord he made that suggestion because it would never have happened without him. And uh, I can't wait to see you all there. Come up, let's let's all hang out, let's jam together and uh, show me what you guys have been working on. But yes, if you're going to Blackpool, then come to Gillow's Bar after the gala show and get ready to have a lot of fun. All right, I'll stop talking. I know most of you just want to learn the card to wallet. So here it is, a signed card to wallet with a regular wallet and no palming. <laughs> So any card can be selected. We'll do it by shuffling the deck and then having someone say stop. So you're not here, but I can stop, say for example, right here. Whatever card they stop at is gonna be signed. So in this case, we have a five of hearts. I'm gonna take the pen. And for all the podcast listeners out there, I'm gonna write Gareth Witty. If you listen to the magic podcast with me and Craig, you'll get that reference. <laughs> So their card is genuinely signed, and then you wait for it to, to dry, so give it a moment. And I want you to watch what happens next. You can see that, you can feel that it's a real signature. Watch that signature with just a wave, completely vanishes. You can see it's genuinely not on top, and it's not on bottom. There's only one place it could be, and that is down here. I'm gonna do this as openly and fairly as possible. Look, it goes nowhere near the deck. Carefully, if I open up my wallet, you'll see there's one card inside. For the very first time, that card is the signed Five of Hearts. It's 
So you can perform this completely impromptu, but by using one thing which you'll all have at home, you can make your life so much easier when performing this. And that is just some double-sided stick tape. So all you're gonna do is take any playing card, and you're just gonna place a bit of double-sided stick tape on it. So in this case, place some on the nine of spades right there. And then I'm gonna stick it just sort of at a rough angle in my wallet. Now it's important that if your wallet opens like a book, you place it in the in the left hand side, okay? Because you want this bit. Do you want you want the front end be to, to that's towards the audience to be empty? Okay. So that gets placed in your wallet, and then that's gonna be placed anywhere. It could be placed off to the side or in your pocket, but it's gonna be placed in, in that in a way that if you were to point this towards the audience, you close it like this, and then place it down into your pocket so that when you bring it back out, it's gonna be in the correct position, okay? So, if you don't wanna use double stick tape, later on I'll explain what you need to do, but it's basically, you're essentially gonna use your thumb to hold it as you pretend to flip, but I'll, I'll get into that right now. So, here comes the fun stuff. You can genuinely use a, uh, any deck of cards, and I'm gonna, I, I like to have the card selection this way because I, I like to vanish in the following manner, but I shuffle the deck, and I have somebody call out stop. Now I have a signed card here, so we'll use this one again, but and I'll place it where it would be, but you genuinely have them stop anywhere they want, and then you, when you do that, you're gonna turn over a triple, so I get it, I do it by getting a pinky break, and the three cards, so you see there's three cards there. You, could, you can also push over three cards, and then get a pinky break, uh, however you want to do it, it's fine, but I like to get a pinky break. So, a performance speed, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. As you say, I'm going to ask you to sign it, is when you're going to get your pinky break under three cards and turn them all over. So in my case, when we, when we did the performance, the card was the five of hearts, which was a pretty good card because there's a lot of white space, right? So, and it was genuinely a random choice. So we get a pinky break, turn over, and I have the five of hearts. At this point, you have them sign it, so they can really sign it, and you're in this position with three cards on top. Now, when I have them sign it, I release the pinky break, and then I get another pinky break after they've signed it as the cards blow it, uh, you could blow another card to dry it. And now you're gonna execute a sort of modified uh, window change. So, the way I do this is, uh, is, is by taking the three cards and displaying it, and, and you can get a nice display as you like sort of blow it, it looks very fair, like a single card, right? I'm gonna pick it up with my thumb and my middle finger at the opposing corners. But what I'm also gonna do is using my ring finger on my right hand, is I'm gonna clip this top corner, like that, okay? So you can see I'm clipping it. So that looks like this. Now, angling my, the back of my hand to obscure the view from the audience, I'm going to use my left thumb to put some pressure on this card as my right thumb releases. And I'm gonna steal these base two, these bottom two cards away. And they're gonna hide behind my palm. So that looks like this. The exposed view. Like actually, I genuinely turn to the side when I do this for the audience. The exposed view looks like this. Let me grab that again. You get two cards, right? And this is why it's slightly modified from the original sort of uh, window, and also from stealing it as well. So I'm going to steal these two cards away, and they're going to hide in my palm. Now, I feel this feels quite casual and natural. It doesn't feel too awkward. There are some palms out there that can feel really weird, and what this essentially is is kind of like a lateral palm, right? <clears throat> Basically, a lateral palm. Instead of being like here, or a lateral palm. It's going to be this angle, but you've got a lot of cover. It's quite surprising how much cover you get from this. So, I steal away, and it's not, I'm not, just, just to note, I'm not peeling back with the thumb. My thumb is essentially just there on my left hand as a placeholder, just to give some friction to hold that card in place. Now we're going to make the card vanish with these two palmed cards. And to do that, it looks like this, so I'm here and it looks like that card just vanishes like this, right? But what's happening is, 
the two cards that are in palm, so from the exposed view, they rest along my three fingers here. One, two, three. They rest on these three fingers. If you look at it from the dead on front view, exposed, it looks like this. And it's important that the cards don't go under because they won't turn. They don't go too high up. They want to be right at, at an angle, like the spine of a book. It's also important to not have your thumb over this card because in a moment when they go up, you don't want to block it. And you also don't want to do too much motion with your thumb when they close up. So, from the exposed view, what I'm doing is I'm laying these cards in and I'm actually applying a slight amount of pressure into it. Because when I release my grip and wave my hand, these two cards are going to snap closed. Okay, so it's kind of hard to do slow, but from here they get lay, laying down. And also you don't want it to be too far sticking out, you want it to be square. And then they're going to snap closed, alright. Uh, from the performance angle, it looks like this, I'm here, come down. And notice that as I, as I get into position, my fingers straighten out. Okay, so I come in and straighten out my hands. And one, two, three, as I wave up, these cards are going to close and coalesce. And it looks like the card vanishes. Right? So, like that. Now, you don't, again, you don't want too much motion in this thumb. A lot of people will, and I even, I'm guilty of it sometimes, will fall victim to doing this. And you want it to look as, as invisible as possible. So you want to be neutral again. So you want to be going. Can we go from the top? I find it easier to run straight through. So single card. Watch. And it won't be perfect every time, but it, as your hand comes up, it can give you a bit of excuse to, to square things if you need to. So you come up and you can just get it done. But now you're in this position, okay? And you're probably wondering how I'm going to resolve this. So what we're going to use, and it's a really nice convincer, we're going to use uh, Ken Krenzel's and Barry Price's undercover switch. Uh, and this, um, the, this is the reason for using this double uh, sort of card window change, is because I'm going to push over one card to show that it's gone, right? So this is really convincing. As I do that, I'm going to push over two cards, and because they're face to face, as long as your deck is worn in slightly, that five will naturally stick to the to the card underneath it. So if you apply a bit of pressure to the side, you should be able to get those two cards to stick together as one. And I'm not really doing any move. I'm just I'm just pushing the pressure in the right place. So as I show this one card, say look, that five's gone. As long as I, even if they split, it's okay because it looks like I'm spreading the deck. As long as you just don't flash the five anyway. I push over two cards, and this ace is going to come over and, and, and coalesce with my thumb and, and index finger. Now, the important part is my ring finger underneath the deck. Because as the ace comes on top, notice that, that it's about 15% about of this blue card over. I'm going to use my ring finger to kick out that five like this. Right? So and from exposed view underneath, it's going to kick out the five. And that happens, so I'm pushing over. I'll do like a super exposed view, but that five is gonna be kicked over and in line with the ace, right? So I'm here. It's also important to hold the ace at the corner. That five is gonna be kicked out and, and squared up. So exposed from here. I'm gonna kick out and try and keep these two cards square. You can use this nail of your ring finger too to stop the five going past the ace this, turn them both over as one. Now I have that five on top, but it's a really fair display that it's not there. So let me show you one more time. Place the five here. Uh, actually, I'll go from the top. So at speed, watch the five as it completely vanishes. Look, it's not on top. I flashed slightly then, but I've secretly switched it out for the five. So once you're at this position, where you've taken that five, uh, the ace shown it that the, that the five's not there. Now you can show the bottom card just to keep that, uh, just to just to clean everything up for the eyes of the audience. If they think it's not on top, they're going to think it's on the bottom. So boom, it's not on bottom either. And now you you have the five on top. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to go for your wallet. Now, you could put this in the hands of the audience before you begin. You could place this on the table. You could have it sort of out of, like, like with your phone, so it's casually sitting there. Or you can make a deal about it, jump into your pocket beforehand. Whatever you want to do, 
So you're going to slowly bring out your wallet. And as you do, you're going to drop your hand to the side and simply get a break under one card. Okay, so just like that. So either a pinky break or just a pushover. I actually use a pushover for one card because it's, 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 I find it a bit easier. Sometimes I accidentally get two. So my hand drops to my side as I pull out the wallet. Okay, and I do it nice and slow so all the attention is here. I make a deal about not touching the deck. So I come over, I, I like to grab the corner of the wallet so it allows me to open it slowly towards the audience, like that, right? So now they can see the card, a card here. Already they're connecting the dots, so uh, to a lot of people, and you'll find this when you perform, it sounds silly, but a lot of people will react to this moment. Okay, it's just one of those things, especially if it's all framed correctly. So we'll get, you will get reactions at this moment here. So bang, this is like that. And now you're gonna execute a shuttle pass with playing cards, right? So like a, I think it's a Bobo shuttle pass. And essentially what's gonna happen, you're gonna do two things at once and they're both really easy, you just have to practice it. You're gonna just turn this hand down and as you come back over, this, this is gonna close, right? So this is just gonna naturally close itself or you can use your finger to execute that. And that's why we open it towards the audience. So that's gonna do this. As you execute uh, this flippant move, and I can't do it now, I'm, now I'm doing it to explain, it's harder, there we go. So this is the, uh, the Louis Simonoff flippant move, I believe, where basically you get a pinky break under the top card, and the flesh of your thumb here is going to cover, you're going to try and dig the deck in, but you'll have a break. And what's going to happen is, as you drop the deck, suddenly, the air is going to get under this card and flip it over. Okay? So it's, it's a knacky thing, but it basically is a break here and the flash of your thumb there, and it'll flip the card over. What you're gonna basically make it look like you're doing is this, like you're just flipping the card from the deck, from the wallet on top of the deck, because your hands are full, right? That's, that, that, that's sort of like the excuse, because you, you have a deck of cards in your hand and a wallet, the natural thing to do is just turn it over. So, cards displayed here, you will get reactions from some people at this point, right? It's guaranteed. And as you pretend to just turn it over, this hand's going to flip this card. Now your timing is always essential, so you kind of want to time it for real, as in practice having a card in your wallet and sort of looking how it would look if you did it in real life. Now I know that's a bit slow for me, um, but they're not going to know exactly how it should look, because they won't have seen this before. But you want to just kind of get that timing to look believable. And the more angled the card lands, the better, because you don't. Need to, it's better if it doesn't land square or on the floor. It's just more of a timing thing that it just turns over and you kind of, if it lands on the floor, great. I feel it looks more convincing at times, but you can do anything you want. So at this point you've done the move. It looks like it's just come out your wallet. This is naturally closed and gone downwards and into your pocket. There's no heat here. And I've been performing this for a couple of years. Well, <laughs> it was actually released on my Odyssey DVDs originally. Uh, and I think that was, I don't know, eight years ago, it was a double disc DVD set. And I performed it on and off since then, especially if I don't have a special uh, magician's wallet on me that can load a card in. I'll just quickly set this up. Uh, and and there is no heat on the wallet. As far as they're concerned, the trick has come to a close naturally and it doesn't feel um, in any way suspicious. So you bring it out, boom, it's gone. The card's here. And as long as you nail that time in, casually chuck this away and to them, the effect is done. It just happens to be the, the deck of cards is in your hand. And that's the that's the effect. Now there's a few things you can do. You don't have to use the entire handling here. For example, uh, you can just turn over a double, have them sign a double, and make that card vanish, right? So then it's gone and you just load that, just lose that X card into the deck. Now their cards on top. You could do things like a, an Erdnaze vanish where I never do very well so I don't do it <laughs> but you could do like an Erdnaze vanish and then uh, say it's gone from the deck and secretly turn that top card over somehow right so I did that and I did it badly too I did that by the similar thing to the to the window change I'm grabbing the card at the corner and turn it over just as I like sort of square the deck uh, there's a million different things you can do to vanish the card but but that's essentially uh, the essential thing is that you just want that card to end up on top. You don't even have to vanish the card in such a way. So you can um, have their card, you can have them place it back into the deck face up, and you can say to them, I want you to remember the Queen of Hearts 
and the six of diamonds, we lose your card into the deck. Now you wait for a moment, snap your fingers or make a magical gesture. Now I get a pinky break under the bottom two cards here because their card's going to be at the bottom because what I've done is steal this out. So as I spread through, they see the queen of hearts and the six of diamonds. There's no card between it. And as I get all the way to the bottom, let me get the pinky break again. I can get all the way here and show their cards gone. So the way that works is by ask, have them place it in, and you can ask them to like tell you to stop somewhere. So I'd spread through and say stop between two cards. So let's say this here. So in this case, the king of hearts and the queen of clubs. And what I'm going to do is just cull that card out as I run through, and cull it to the bottom of the deck. And you can even show a nice singular card here. And like I say, and you can draw attention to the fact that the last card is the five if you want to. Now, square the deck, get that pinky break, and uh, now as you run through, you look for that queen, king of hearts and queen of clubs, the cards are not between it, as you go all the way through, the cards apparently vanish from the deck, and now it's controlled to the top. So, uh, and also, also you can just genuinely pretend to lose it in the deck, so they think it's somewhere in there, and you can say it's not on top, and this is a double, uh, and it's not on bottom. So, again, that one, whatever control you want to use, I use a Jerry Sadowitz slip control, that appears to go in the center. Uh, you show it's not on top, it's not on bottom. It's lost somewhere in the deck, or you do this, now it's vanished, boom. And you, then you can go straight to the wallet, bring it out, open it up nice and slowly to show it's there, and then chuck it out, pretend to throw it from the wallet onto the deck of cards. One more thing, here's what to do if you don't have double stick tape and you want to do this completely impromptu. Remove the card, well you wouldn't have stick tape, it wouldn't be stuck there. Take any card, place it in the wallet in exactly the same position, load it into your pocket. Now as before, go through, have a card selected, uh, in this case eight of spades, you can make it vanish however you want, boom that card's gone, it's not on top, not on bottom. Let's jump to my wallet, get my break again, I'm going to perform it identically as before. This time, however, though, I am going to open the wallet a bit slower because sometimes the air suction will cause that card to stick. So I open the wallet a bit slower and I can show this one card in my wallet. I'm going to do exactly the same thing as before, but this time I'm just going to pinch that card with my thumb so it can't fall out. So I'm just going to pinch that card with my thumb as I execute the move. Now, this is the tricky part. You need to keep the thumb on the card as it goes, as the, as the wallet closes, and then squeeze it so it doesn't fall out as you place it away because you will actually find sometimes that card will fall out if you don't do it close uh, do it carefully so we'll use the five of diamonds this time tip it out of the out of the wallet now this card is trying to wiggle around so I just very casually close it up make sure it's neatly in there don't let it fall out and uh, and that's just the way to do it impromptu. And you can see why the double stick tape just helps just a little bit because it makes your hand uh, a lot more open and uh, doesn't seem as, uh, as as if you're doing anything, you know. I hope you guys all enjoyed that. It's again been one of my favorite pieces of magic that I've been performing for years and years and years. I released it years ago. It's a bit of a hidden gem and I just wanted to be able to, I love card to wallet, didn't always carry, I didn't always like magic wallets. So I didn't always carry them, but I wanted to do card to wallet because it's such a powerful effect. So there we have it. That this is one of the one of the ways I come up with. And if there's any interest, maybe in the future, I'll do a video showing some of the other impromptu ways that I perform card to wallet. But thank you all so much. Guys, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and drop a comment in the video below because it really helps me grow my channel and keep making these videos for you. If you like that and you want to see more, then every Tuesday, every Thursday and every Sunday, we do Tutorial Tuesdays where I teach you guys brand new magic or I go over some of my original creations from, from when I released them originally. Uh, on Thursdays, it's the wife test where I perform live magic to my wife because we all know performing sometimes for strangers or the camera, they just freeze up and don't give a real reaction. When you perform to your favorite people like your wife, your best friend, your mum, your dad, they will often be your best and most honest critics and when you do a good effect, because they've seen so much, they will give a genuine reaction because they're actually run away. So the wife test is the ultimate litmus test for new magic. That's on Thursdays and then Sunday is the live worldwide jam. It's called the Sunday session. We're here every Sunday. We try to make as many of them as we can be possible to make live. And it's basically because jamming with other magicians is the best thing ever. 
We just want to jam, talk methods, talk ideas. And this week we've got an incredibly good one. We've got Craig Petty and Ben Williams, all three of us live at the Sunday session, 5 p.m. UK time, which is like 9 a.m. California time. And the topic of discussion for the live jam, where we're not gonna like hide anything, we can talk about methods, presentations, ideas, everything. It's all about the Torna Restored card. So hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can see when the new videos drop. Drop me a comment below. Let me know if you want to see more card to wallet stuff. If you want to see how I handle magician's card to wallets. Let me know uh, essentially what you think of this and if there's any feedback or anything else that you feel like you need to learn regarding the card to wallet. Because I could talk about this for like three weeks straight and not run out of breath. <laughs> Alright guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I've, been, I've loved filming this video more than anyone I've done to date so far because it's just an effect I just know forward, backwards, inside out and I've been doing it for such a long time. I know, more importantly, that by teaching you guys this, those of you that go out and perform it, you'll have a, a, a little hidden gem of magic that you can carry with you for the rest of your magic life. So thanks so much, guys. I'll see you all in the next video, which is the weekly wife test coming to you on Thursday. <laughs> mm -hmm.